Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm in Cali. Had a harrowing day, man, on the way out here. Uh, the plane was diverted to, it was a direct flight to, from uh, Fort Lauderdale to LA, but the plane was diverted to Albuquerque because there was a sick passenger on board. So we had to land at Albuquerque and then we stayed there for like uh, an hour and a half. And I finally got to LA and I'm dealing with a brutal, brutal case of gout. I get gout, I got gout in my knee. And man, it is excruciating and I could barely walk. I can't really walk. I mean, I'm just like going at a snail's pace and every step is incredibly painful. I don't know if any of you have gout, you know what I'm talking about. It's extremely painful and it's stubborn. I mean, it lasts for a while. So anyway, the market is uh, looking pretty resilient, even though we've had a, a, a sizable slowdown in the fiscal flows, which is normal, you know, around the middle or the third week in the month. Uh, they'll pick up again on August 1st when we get the first of the month payments. And then as I've been saying now for a couple of months, we get that August 15th quarterly interest payment, but that's it, that, that's the peak in the flows. And I, I think that the market looks kind of um, speculative here. By speculative, I mean, you know, a lot of people who were sitting on the sidelines were short. I mean, they're chasing prices up right now and these are not, these are not strong hands. You know, I, I did the video a couple of days ago on like, you had months and months and months to buy low. And, um, you know, everybody was bearish and everybody was focused on the Fed and, and interest rate hikes, notwithstanding the fact that we had 10 interest rate hikes and the market is, um, I don't know, it's having its best rally in, in years. And, you know, this, is, this is, comes down to everything I've been saying from day one, that rates are a fiscal, rate hikes are a fiscal expansion. And while they may have a negative impact on financial assets, you know, in, at the beginning, you reach an inflection point where the negative impact uh, le becomes less and less. And what takes over is the, the positive fiscal impact. And that's gonna continue. Like, you know, whatever correction you get um, coming up, September, October, I mean, that's just another buying opportunity because these fiscal flows, they're not, they're not gonna come down. I mean, it, it would take an act of Congress uh, to cut spending. And I, like I said, you know, you can't make small cuts in discretionary because the major spending items that really add to the flows uh, right now, that Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, defense, obviously, which is discretionary, but it's treated like a non-discretionary and you always get increases. And also now um, interest transfers, in interest income transfers. So these are just gonna, these are gonna stay high. They're gonna get higher. And so you're not, you're not gonna see any significant spending cuts and, and that's good. I mean, some of you might be saying, well, that's bad. Like, you know, I hear this all the time. Oh, the government shouldn't spend. The government has to spend to put the dollars. Like I said, if, you know, if you, anyone who's ever played the game of Monopoly they know that you can't play the game unless the game distributes the money. The government has to spend those dollars into existence for us to have any with which to pay taxes. That's just a fact. I mean, they don't come. I mean, you still, we're still hearing this ridiculous bullshit about how, you know, what are we gonna keep borrowing from China? Like borrow what? Yeah, we're borrowing dollars. How did China get the dollars? China sold us stuff, they got the dollars. And, you know, it comes, the, the origin is the monopoly issuer, which is the United States government. There's no inability to uh, create dollars. So you need to have spending to support the economy. I mean, unless our economy was uh, set up as an export driven economy like Japan or China, but we're not like that. And imports are a benefit, okay? Because we get, we get the goods, and services we get, and um, those are, are real assets. Those are things you need to live. I mean, electronics, cars, uh, all kinds of stuff. And they get currency, which we basically print. So, you know, the idea that exports are better, they're, they're just not. I mean, the fact of the matter is, exports are a cost. You're using labor to 
create real assets which you then ship away to foreigners for their consumption. I mean, one good example of this is oil. Now we're, we're a net exporter of oil, big time. That never used to be the case, but this is why gasoline prices, you know, don't really come down very much. I mean, we're exporting our product. So, I mean, you might think, uh, yeah, you got some refinery jobs or whatever, shipping, transportation jobs are created, maybe drillers. But in the end, we as consumers, we lose that product. You know, now everybody's saying, well, what happened to energy independence? It's very easy to explain what happened to energy independence. We exported it away. So like, it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Anyway, I'm dealing with a lot of pain right now. So, um, and I gotta kind of get straightened out. I just moved into my new place here and, uh, uh, you know, I'll give you, uh, I'll be back at you tomorrow, hopefully feeling better. All right, take care everybody. See you tomorrow, bye.